It is a land of beauty. A land of fire and ice. A land of danger. Of wildness. It is fall in Yellowstone. Every year in fall, Yellowstone gets busier than usual. Preparations for the upcoming winter time are in full swing. Even the weather does not look like it, yet. These are the last warm and sunny days for this year, before the winter will be keeping Yellowstone in his strong and icy grip for the next six months. Especially the grazing herds like the bison find their last green. In a typical year, more than 3,000 bison roam the grasslands of Yellowstone National Park. Almost exterminated by white settlers by the end of the 19th century, the population now could recover again. Yellowstone National Park is the only place in the lower 48 states to have a continuously free-ranging bison population since prehistoric times. This herd, crossing the Yellowstone River, had been just hunted by a wolf pack from the Hayden Valley. The river now offers protection and it is safe on the other side, for now. Since the wolves have been reintroduced into the Yellowstone Park in the 1990s, adult bison do have larger predators again, what they didn't for many, many decades. So, when it is getting dark, the herd has to watch out for whatever tries to get close to them by favor of night. But the bison has to live with a neighbor way more dangerous than any wolves or grizzly bears. With half of the Earth's geothermal features, Yellowstone holds the planet's most diverse and intact collection of geysers, 
hot springs, mud pots and fumaroles. Its more than 300 geysers make up two-thirds of all those found on Earth. But what feeds this geothermal particularity? Where does the enormous heat come from? In late summer 1870, a 30-year-old army lieutenant scrambled his way to the summit of the Mount Washburn above the Yellowstone River. He was part of an exploratory expedition in the Yellowstone region. Right on top of Mount Washburn he looked to the south and he noticed that something was missing from a stretch of the Rocky Mountains. Mountains. For miles and miles the only elevations were in the distance, forming parentheses around a huge forested basin. The lieutenant saw only one way to explain the opening. The Great Basin, he wrote, has been formerly one fast crater of now extinct volcano. Yellowstone is a volcano, and not just any volcano. The oldest, most famous national park in the United States sits squarely atop one of the biggest volcanoes on Earth. But the lieutenant was wrong in one crucial respect. The truth is, Yellowstone's volcano is not extinct. To an unsettling degree, it is very much alive. This eagle is puzzled. He looks down and sees a limping coyote which has been driven painfully out of the field. But what happened? A cow bison was killed by a wolf pack the night before. And now the carcass is an object of desire for everyone out there. Unfortunately for the coyote, it's not first come, first serve. It's reserved for whoever is stronger. And in this case, it was the grizzly mother with her two cubs. But for whatever reason, they all seem to be nervous. Something big is coming their way. It turned out that it was not the old bull that scared them away. It was a male grizzly that came through the bushes and now feeds on the carcass. But even that male grizzly is in a rush. And his bites become bigger and more and more hasty. And he did well to leave the field in time. This huge male grizzly takes his time feeding on the carcass and finally disappears back into the bush full and totally unhurried.
trying to fill nature in Yellowstone, like in any other place in the wild, means getting up early and into bed late. It means you have to be patient, sometimes fearless but precocious, or you even have to creep up on close to booty without being noticed once. yourself with. Or Mother Nature is rewarding you. Leaving Yellowstone National Park southbound, there is no way to dodge the Grand Teton National Park and that's a good thing. Visitors are coming to Grand Teton year round and not only because of the breathtaking atmosphere after a late summer thunderstorm. The Grand Teton is also a remarkable place because of its stunning mountain range, which rises above a scene rich with extraordinary wildlife, pristine lakes and alpine terrain. But thunderstorms also create problems. Almost every year, hundreds of square miles of forest are consumed by wildfires in or around the park, ignited by lightning or human unawareness. In fall, the Yellowstone National Park is dry. No melting water from the Rockies is coming into the basin anymore. And because of its volcanic history, Yellowstone's surface is very porous so that rainwater directly disappears into the ground without remaining. Except for all those riverbeds, the land is desperately begging for water. And when you come down here, you get the strength from this water. You you put it on your face, your body. It's like it's a prayer that whatever you're praying for will come come to you or go to somebody else. You wash yourself off and it gives you more strength to really be a strong native person. And that's what we share with our brother here. He comes to us from overseas and we share this culture with him because he wants to know what our culture is all about. And that's one of our things, is water. At the end of September, cool morning fogs tell of the approaching winter time. Next week, the first snow will be here. And it won't get away until April or May next year. But today, the sun is still strong enough and a small bath in the creek can be taken.
The evening one more time brings warm sunbeams all the way down to the grazing fields. And it will be another wonderful sunset at Yellowstone Lake. But it might be the last for a long time. <laughs>